Greetings people, today we're going to design the GUI together. Today we're going to make a professional GUI. Like, not the professional, I'm not going to call myself professional in that thing, but we're going to design very complex GUI in very simple way. And for that we're going to use only four constraints, like UI list layout, UI flex item, UI padding, and whatever you will find in the Roblox Studio. I will show some main concepts. I have my screen GUI. For this tutorial, I'm going to like color everything in different colors that you can see like the difference. Let's tell that that frame is our holder and we're going to add another frame. Let's name it holder. Size 1, position 0.5. I hope that you're already familiar with the normal properties of the frames like and all the UI elements. Today we're not going to cover all of that. Today we're going to cover all the stuff, we're going to cover the constraints. We have our holder and for example, what if you let me open the paint, let's just look at a couple concepts. First thing, we're going to look what's UI list layout, then we're going to look what's UI flex item and then we're going to look what optimal properties for the scrolling frame are. With that, we're going to design first a couple of things. Our first GUI will be something like this just the buttons not the buttons but frames that like on top of each other in the list for that let's add the scrolling frame make the size 1 1 position 0.5 and as you already know if I add a couple frames let me just color everything in different colors that you can see if I add the UI list layout and I will just copy the frames as you see frames stuck on top of each other and if I just increase the padding as you see, there is a spacing between these frames. So now what do we do? And let me just make the fixed size frame. So let's make it on the width 1 and on the height 40 pixels. Like for the width we're using scale and for the height we're using normal pixels because the scrolling frame can scale on the vertical axis and that's not very good for us. So we want to avoid like the vertical scaling on the scrolling frame. Let's just copy a bunch of these. See? We already created like small list very easily. Now let's improve our scrolling frame. As you see, I got like a lot of spare space and I can like scroll the frame. I don't want to scroll my frame if I don't have enough items. For this, we're going to go to the properties of the scrolling frame. We're going to set the canvas size to zero. That means like fully cancel it. Then I prefer to put the scroll bar thickness on five pixels because 12 is too much. Then the most important part, I need to find the property automatic canvas size. If I put this, it automatically stays on none, but we can put this on Y. And right now, we see nothing. What that means, if I increase the amount of frames, as you see, the canvas size automatically grows. So we don't need to use the scripts to like expand the scrolling frame. We have to change some other thing. Vertical scroll bar in set. So let's look at this situation. For example, we having a text in one of these. If I increase the size to one and I just start writing infinite amount of labels and let's just truncate the text at the end. As you see, this text label gets cut off right under this scrolling thing. So to fix this, we're going to use the vertical scroll bar inset. It means it will offset everything from this scrolling thing to all the side. And I will set to the scroll bar. That means like if the scroll bar exists and as you see, the text label moved to the left and we fully see it. So we will be using this scrolling frame properties. Again, the canvas size should be zero. That means like we don't have like initial size. Then scroll bar thickness. I just prefer that that is small value. Then the so vertical scroll bar inset. That means this thing, it's not going to cover anything from the list. Like these items will not go pass through it like we saw with the text label. And we're going to put the automatic canvas size on Y. That's going to rescale on Y direction. With that, we're going a little bit further. Let's explore the situation like this. We want a top bar, for example, that is going to have some buttons on the right. Let's make again 140, like a top bar. What people tend to do if they create the button, they going just to rescale it and put it right here. We can do it all the way that you don't ever have to touch the position. Almost like you have 
only encounter on a couple cases. So for this we're going to explore UI padding and as well UI list layout but all the properties of it. So let's create not a text button but image button because it's just an image. Image button that what I usually do I set the size to one. Right now it's like fully stretched but to fix this I'm just using the UI spec ratio that makes the button square. Then I want this button on the right side and I'm going to add the UI list layout and I'm going to put the field direction on horizontals. It means like every element will be horizontally aligned and horizontal alignment will be on the right. So I already moved my button to the right. That's the first step. Then I want to add the second button and we want this fancy spacing around them and in between them. To add the fancy spacing in between them, we're going just to UI list layout and increase the padding or on five, something like that. And to make the paddings from the sides, we could of course decrease the size, but we don't want to touch it that much. For this, we're going to use the UI padding. That means it will add the offset from all sides and GUI elements will adapt to that. That means like if we have a, that amount of space and we are using the padding of five pixel and that shrinks space to this part. So scale of one to the UI element, like. It's going to be that space, not that space, but that space. I will show you how. So let me add the padding from all sides on five pixels. And as you see, the button is on size one one, but it's already as well scaled down five pixels from all sides. And we have this fancy padding. And there's the thing. What if we want to add text here? What we're going to do in that situation? We could put first what we can do. We can just add the text label, do it size one of course if you want to change the rearrangement of the elements you can go and put the least layout order to some higher values for some elements for example like this one too so we're having the text label what we can do we can just take it like this and resize it but if i'm going to take the frame and rescale it you see the problem already this one we want to avoid this we want the text to fill the whole top bar so for this, I'm going to use the UI flex item. First, we're going to put the size on 111. It's going to stick out first, but no panic, no panic. We're going to UI flex item and we're going to put the flex mode on fill. That means like it will fill all the empty space. You can play around with settings and like find out what it makes. And as you see, I'm scaling and don't look at this. That's very edge case. If I scale it, we see paddings from the left, up, down, bottom, spacing is here, and all of that fancy stuff. What if I want to increase, for example, the spacing between the buttons and the label itself? I will use some kind of thing like a container, but that's not an instance, we're going just to use a normal frame. And for that frame, we're going to explore another property, automatic size. For that, I'm going just to do size 0,1. It means scale 0 on the x direction and scale 1 on the y direction. So 0 pixels in wide and all the pixels in height. So let's name it folder, buttons, buttons or whatever. And for this I'm going to take the buttons and I'm just going to put that in container. And all buttons have disappeared. To fix this I'm going to put the automatic size on xy. And we still don't see the effect. For this we have to add the UI list layout let me find it you are list layout you see already the buttons like stood up and now i'm going to change the field direction to horizontal and i'm going to add the padding between the buttons uh let me just make it that color that you see so that's all the container and right now we can isolate the padding between these frames so if i want to increase the padding here but i want to keep the padding like this here i just isolate these buttons in all the frame i'm just this frame I'm just setting automatic size on XY or Y we're going to use that a lot and I'm just putting size some kind of size you can put even put zero you see you can add another padding inside so to scale buttons even more or we can add another padding on top between these ones so let me just do 20 if you don't like this buttons they are more isolated or let's explore very very hard case if we want to have one button in the center like this and one button at the side and there's like no easy way to do that 
Of course we can position, but we're not using the position here. We're going to use the position only like 0 0.5, 0 and 1. That's that's maximum that we will use. Everything is padding and everything we can imagine. So let's explore this edge case. Let's call this button delete. And I'm going to create another frame right here. We can do as well UI list layout that we can see. Then I'm just going to delete everything inside. And I'm going to add the button, image button or text button. Let's add the text button. It's better. And for this kind of stuff, I'm not going to recommend to use a scale. I'm going to use the offset. What we can do, we can put the size of 100 pixels and one. That means like 100 pixels in width and one in height. We can, of course, do like fixed size, like 100 by 40. We don't need it now. So we will use the UI list layout and as well field direction horizontal. And we're going to use here the horizontal flex to position the buttons. Uh, for this, what we can do, we can do space around. That means like if I add some other things, they're going to be positioned like even the space. Whatever. You can look at the other modes. For example, there's a mod space evenly, space between. That means like everything is rolled to the sides. And for that case, if I just put the button like this and image button is the size of the one, not this, not this, sorry, of the size of one UI aspect ratio. You see, we cannot like easily space it on the center. Whatever mod we try, like we could try space between, space around, non. Non is the closest, but not that we want. For that case, I'm going to add, I'm going to commit crime. I'm going to add another two frames. I'm going to take that frame. I'm going to put the size on one, like fully scale. We're going to use the UI flex item for this. And I'm going to add it right now. Yeah, UI flex item, build direction like this. So I think we don't need the space around mode. We can just put non. So that frame is going to be that color. Uh, button is going to be that color and right now on the fill mode as you see we got the spacing so what we have to do to achieve this thing first thing uh, we have like to have two of them on the left and on the right and the button in between so i will take this button i will just throw on one of them then i'm going to change the layout order i'm going to say that the button has layout order of one like this and this frame going to have layout order of two that means like the bigger the order the further it will so uh, we got it like this so now if i increase the padding let me uh, just recolor the parent frame to the green to the gray like this you already see the layout we are looking for then we can of course add the ui padding from all sides like this already having that kind of effect that we want so the button is here we can of course like do the ui padding and Add something to the left like this to offset the button and don't be worried about these frames you what you can do is just to make them invisible so background transparency and as you see we got the layout that we want delete button on the center and this button on the right then we're going to explore another case and we have some ui buttons not the buttons but frames and we can expand them and we have as well all the frames and you want to be able to expand them and push all the elements a little bit further to take the space for the menu that you want to show. Let's look how do we do that. First thing, let me just get rid of those. And we have to keep on this scrolling frame. Let me delete as well these frames. Let's just add a frame, color it somehow like this on the red and make this frame visible. Then we're going to set the fixed size, for example, on 140. Let's just go straight up to the solution. For that case, like if I'm adding the buttons, you see, I want to push all of them when I open one of the menus. I'm going to add the UI padding from all sides, like 5555, five, 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 as it looks better. Uh, then we have the button here. We can, of course, like do the padding, I think. For that thing, I'm not going to put the fixed size at the start. So we're going to do the size on zero. That means we have to do the automatic size. Then we're going to create a frame, which is going to be the size of one and 40 pixels. Let's recolor this frame in this color. Then we're going to do the drop menu. So it's as well frame. Let's add the UI list layout like this and recolor this in this kind of thing. So we're having our drop down menu that is going to be uh, for now 50 pixels wide like this. 
or even 100, let's make it realistic. Uh, then this is the top menu, we're going to add again UI padding, 5555, add the button, image button, size of 1, UI aspect ratio on 1, so we have in the button like unfold. So as you see, the frame that we created before, like holder, has size 0, but we see that it has size not 0, but 372, that means like it automatically scales. And that's already the solution. That means like if I hide the frame, this frame is going to be rescaled. And because we have automatic size on the scrolling frame, we can just add a couple of this. And if I make it visible, it pushes everything down to put the drop down menu. Yeah, you could experiment with that. So that's the basic concepts that we need to know. And right now I'm going to design a color palette plugin GUI and maybe make a time lapse how I make it. And about the colors, you should not worry about them first, I think. First, you have to see like what spacings do you have and which elements where. So don't worry about the color first. First comes like understanding of the GUI like what you're making. And then you can recolor the whole frame. But I find it like easily to navigate around if you have like different colors. For example, I made this plugin toggle UI. It started like this, like one to one. Different colors, like everything different. But then I just recolored it. I needed to see the spacings. I needed to see what elements am I seeing. And for now, it's time for time lapse. <laughs>